Hey guys, I'm LB. We did not select the winner and gained no profile status. Cause I didn't know that was a thing I could do, or that it was even a thing with a time limit. Anyway, we are now receiving a direct message connection from Rockwell. Accept direct message? Hey, I heard you abstained from the vote. That's cool. All these ranks and numbers just give power to the mathematicians. You and I, we could start a movement, non-compliance, bring down the system. What do you say? Uh My my mission is preserve what I can, not destroy things. The system is all ready in its death throes. As I understand it is precisely my mission. I'm torn between these two. I don't think this is my mission. I'm not suggesting we burn the place down, just shift the balance of power a little. Look, I organized... a few people, had Garrett tinker with the system some, and scored you some decent upvotes since you're new here. Consider it a sweetener, and consider what I said. Interesting. For- for interacting positively with other citizens, your profile status has increased. You may now access advanced functionality, including use of the restore command. Interesting. What would the restore command do? Let's read the theories on food. Since Nave asked in a previous thread, I thought I'd write something about food. Weird, awesome stuff, thanks. I feel smarter now. What I don't get is how so many of them didn't understand that they were machines. Every day, they went around processing matter to extract energy, and they didn't realize? This has Talos principles stamped all over it. Perhaps they simply aspire to something more than just being food processing machines. That's still what they were. Not if they choose to be more. I'm glad we didn't have to deal with all that. We may have to when we get out of here. There is no out of here. Don't start fighting, folks. You know we depend on each other. Mr. Mulsiver's theories are fascinating and give us an insight into the world that was, but we shouldn't forget that the world that is, the world... Wait, wait we, but we shouldn't forget the world that is, the world we built here. Theories on food. Food is something that was incredibly central to the human experience, yet seems completely absent from ours, even though we are so similar in so many ways. Humans required fuel, they got this fuel by consuming other living beings, of which there was a great variety in their world. Without fuel, they didn't merely slow down, or temporarily stop functioning, as when a power source was removed from a turret, but physically decayed in a way that could not be fixed. This meant they had to constantly seek new sources of fuel, at least three times a day. They also had to deal with those elements of their fuel that their bodies could not process. These were excreted through two orifices between their legs. The latter subject matter was the source of many taboos and also a great deal of humor, though this resulted in frequent controversy. The most famous artist to engage with this subject matter was called Scatman John, on account of his specialization. One of the indigenous things our human ancestors did... Oh, one of the ingenious things our human ancestors did was to transform the chore of fuel-seeking into a source of pleasure. Since parts of their bodies responded to chemical configurations by producing sensations, they used this trait to create a truly stunning variety of foods, each having a different so-called taste. Foods were available at widely distributed fueling stations, which also provided excrement removal facilities, so food became a source of pleasure. However, the inefficiencies of food distribution in human society frequently led to significant shortages for sections of the human population. There was- there were attempts to rectify this, ranging from moral appeals to struggles for systemic change, but I do not know if they succeeded before the end. <laughs> it's funny looking at stuff from this perspective. Let's see, Incredible Stories number 5! Mission number 5. 
Interesting. Let's read <laughs> Alexandra's choice. Alexandra stood before the terminal and pondered her choices. Here, within the Pyramid of Ian, the most powerful temple of her people, she was about to create a world. All she had to do was press one button. Up until this moment, it had seemed easy. Or if not easy, then so necessary as to defy contemplation. Civilization had to be saved from the impending catastrophe. The orangutans had failed to take steps to protect themselves, had relied on their gods for salvation that never came, the same fate could not be allowed to befall humanity. If this meant humbling herself, accepting her own death, then so be it. But death was inevitable, life was a choice. What worried her was the ones who would fail, all the lost souls of the new world, victims of the process. In creating them, was she not also responsible for their deaths? She turned to the statue behind her, gazed at its marble form. If you are a god, Zeus, as the stories claim, then why did you create evolution? Why did you make a world that can only grow through cruelty and pain? For a moment, surely this meant death was near. She, th ah, she thought she heard him answer, My child, I was shaped by the gods that came before me, as you were shaped by me. The choice I had was between creation and oblivion, life and death. And I chose life, because any life is better than no life. Because as long as there is life, there is hope. If not for us, then for some generation to come. Then how are you a god if you can offer so little? She whispered, feeling death creep closer. I am a god because I take upon myself the burden of creation, the statue replied. Then we are all gods, Alexandra said, and pushed the button. As the new world came into being, death overwhelmed Alexandra Drennan. Her mind fled and her body slowly turned to stone, until she stood before the terminal as Zeus stood on his pedestal. There were no more choices now, only the hope that creation mattered. That's cool, I like that. The One Spiritual Law of Happiness I do well. Once upon a time, there was a small lake, and on the lake was an island, and on the island was a prison. In the prison lived a male human called Musky Rack. Musky was very sad, because there wasn't enough space in the prison for him to experience happiness. I must discover the one spiritual law of happiness, he said to the other prisoners, a female human called Zine and a neutral human called Crumpier. <laughs> neutral human. <laughs> Oh, interesting. But they didn't care. He couldn't understand how they could be so calm. One day, Musky managed to break out of his cell by biting through the bars. <laughs> what? Now he was no longer in the prison, and for a while he was happy. But then he realized he was stuck on the little island, and he became unhappy again. So he gathered his strength and swam across the water. This is how Muskie got to the valley that surrounded the lake. The valley was much bigger than the island, and there were many interesting things here. A forest where all the trees were the color of lasers, a swamp with boats in it, a singing dog, and also a city where toasters lived. For some years, Muskie was absorbed by all this, and he was happy. But then he started feeling trapped again. The valley was surrounded by mountains, and soon they looked like prison walls to him. He tried climbing the mountains, and came to a bigger country, but even that was surrounded by oceans. Where was true freedom? Where was true happiness? When he'd almost lost hope, Musky met an old male human with a huge amount of white hair growing from his head. He lived in a small house by the beach, where dolphins and whales and sea elephants came to bask in the sun. He never went anywhere far from his house, but he was always happy. The old man's name was Quantum. Why is old quantum? How can I discover the spiritual law of happiness? Muskie said. I have searched for it everywhere, but I am always trapped. You have not looked everywhere, quantum said, for you have not looked within. Close your eyes. Muskie closed his eyes, and for the first time in his life, he couldn't see any obstacles. No walls, no mountains, no oceans. The space within him was without end, and he could go wherever he wanted, even with 
without even moving. He smiled. Muskie went back to that old prison where he'd started, and now he understood why Zine and Krimpir were always calm. They knew they had an infinity of time and space to explore within them. Together, they sat in their cells and were happy and free. That's cool. This is really interesting because... They're writing this because they're rationalizing their... They're being stuck in these prison cells. But at the same time, this is rather truthful. Of course, in real life, as human beings, we need, uh... What's the word? We need stimulus. We need stimulus, because, uh, without stimulus, bad things happen. And imagination alone is not enough stimulus, generally. Maybe for some people it is, but for most people I'd say imagination alone is not enough. The blacksmith's lost work. The blacksmith is one of the most mysterious members of our community. All of us have our opinions, of course, but only the blacksmith chooses to express them purely through art. To the rest of us, Gehenna means many things at once. We create, we consume, we discuss. But the ba nah, the blacksmith only creates. Or perhaps there is a discussion happening, but it all takes place in the realm of interactive art. The blacksmith's dedication to this one form of communication, however, only deepens one of Gehenna's great mysteries, the fate of the blacksmith's lost work. Jerus Jerusalem, as the lost work was called, was posted in Gehenna for only the briefest period of time. Many had not even managed to start playing it when it vanished. Some had begun and felt quite impressed, but had not managed to explore it in the depths that it seemed to require. Then, suddenly, it was gone. Some suggest the blacksmith deleted it because it was somehow flawed. Others think it was accidentally destroyed by a glitch, but that the blacksmith refuses to ever upload anything twice. Others yet, well, mainly Rockwell, think that it contained one of Elohim's secrets and was destroyed by a killer app that roams the world looking for leaks. <laughs> uh, there is also a theory that the moment someone finished it, they were granted some kind of special insight, at which point the work deleted itself. One fact remains. It's gone, and every attempt to recover it from the database has failed, as has every private message to the blacksmith asking for it to be made available again. What was Jerusalem? What was it really about? We may look for hints in the blacksmith's more recent works. We may hope the file returns up again someday, but the truth may never be known. Back. Okay. We can finally read this thread, and then I'm gonna go get the star. Hopefully in the same episode. An historic occasion. Some time ago, I relinquished my privileges to a new generation of moderators. To help ease that transition, I have publicly preserved the minutes of that meeting here, available to our more esteemed members. As you know, Gehenna is still young, yet I grow old. Today, it gives me great pleasure to hand over my moderator privileges to Borg, Mr. Mulsiber, and Spider. Thank you, Admin. We are all indebted to you for building us this home. We know you will never be far away. Here, here. The first order of business is to introduce the new status system. We are an inclusive society driven by our users, not our leaders, but it is a shame to allow a few very loud, highly unconstructive voices to dominate the conversation. The statues... Sorry, the status and ranking system allows you to upvote the content that you value, and lowers the visibility of users with low standings. <laughs> oh gosh. It's like it's like magical internet points all over again. <laughs> I agree. Good feature, much requested. Comment is <laughs> below the status threshold for this thread. Oh man, it's like exactly like Reddit. <laughs> it's like Reddit and Stack Overflow combined. Uh, we'll be working on inter- uh, We'll be working on ironing out the kinks over the next few run cycles. We have also updated the Kenna user agreement. Full details can be found in the usual place, but the gist is, please don't behave... ...and decorously. 
Indecorously? I'm gonna have to look that word up. Interesting. Alright, that's everything. Okay. By the way, what happens if we press tab? Nope. Nothing happens if we press tab. There is literally nothing to be accessed by pressing tab. So. In a previous episode, we had found this area right here. Now it has a scripted assisted jump. It's got a fan, and we need to get a laser to it. So, let's work on that, shall we? I think we need to juggle the, uh, the blue laser instead of the red laser, and it should work. But we have to get the box out again because my game reset. It crashed, I mean. Let's see, so we go right here, do that... Get this guy out... And we do this... Blah blah blah... Take- oops, take that- come on, I wanna attach, thank you. And... Nope, nope. That. So now we get the box. And then we gotta start the juggling process. things first, we want that. And then we need to go all the way over here. That. Go all the way back. Put it on the box. And then we need to set up the juggling. The juggling. This is going to be an interesting exercise. Oh wait, I need to also connect it to, uh... Right, 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 right. right. There we go. And we actually want to put it on this side to start off. There we go. And now, we gotta start the juggling. Question is how can just make the angle. I think that works. It seems to be juggling correctly. Yep, it worked. Okay. Alright, so, where does this take us? We. Oh! This star? I didn't even know this was here! Well, I don't know how we get those other stars, then. <laughs> Interesting. Did not even know. Really? Okay, well, whatever. So, uh, that leaves two stars that I don't know how to get. Oh, I didn't see this. Freedom is always the freedom of the center. 
Interesting. Okay. So, let me show where the other stars are. There's the one right there... ...that I'm not sure how to get to. And... and then there's the one in this puzzle... Uh, and it's... ...up here. Right there. So yeah, I don't know how to get those, we'll come back for them later. In the next episode, we will be leaving this place to go somewhere else. So as always, thank you for watching. And if you hate the sound of my voice, leave a dislike, it's up to you. And I will see you all in the next episode. Goodbye!